Today we're gonna to find out how complicated it is to put a CJ clip on a YJ frame. After we bought this CJ, we realized that the tub was rotten, so we replaced the tub with the YJ tub. Then we figured out that the frame was rotten, so we had to replace the frame with the YJ frame. Well now, we're basically trying to put a CJ wrap on a YJ Jeep. So today, we'll do what we do best and figure out a way to make it work. It's finally time to get the CJ7 in the shop and start knocking out all the things we need to do so we can take this thing four-wheeling. Amber loves her new four-wheeler. The first thing that we have to do is, if you look here, something is not right. You can tell because, well, the gaps. Now, if you look up here, the, my, er, my first solution was, well, I'll just drop the front end down. Well, without doing major surgery to the front end, that's not gonna happen. The problem is, what we have here is a YJ tub that I converted to be exactly like a CJ tub, except for I didn't realize that a YJ tub actually sits lower on the frame than a CJ does. So my solution is to give the YJ tub a lift kit. We're gonna do, a, I got a one inch body lift that we're gonna put under it. I think that's gonna be enough. If it's not, uh, we might have to get a different one, but I think, I think one inch is gonna be enough to get this up high enough so that we can get the front end to fit properly. And then once we get the front end on here properly, we're gonna have to remake this front mount. Cause also this is a YJ frame because when we got ready to put this Jeep together, the CJ frame was so rusty, we couldn't use it. And the only thing I could find was a YJ frame. So we're stuck with what we could find. And, and you can buy aftermarket CJ frames, but this is not that build. So We'll have to remake this front mount and get the front end up a little higher. I do like the fact that the YJ frame, I believe the steering box mount is a little bit better. Uh, it's in a different spot, obviously, but I think it's a little bit more stable than the CJ steering box mount was. So first thing you gotta do is get this front wrap off here and then start, we're gonna use the lift for the first time. So excited about that. And then uh, get the body lift done on the back on the, the tub and then try to refit the front end. We did a video, kind of an introduction to this. If you wanna kind of know the backstory on how we got to the point we're at now, it's not a lot of actual work because we weren't doing YouTube when we started building this. This is a, a pre-YouTube project Couple that we need pictures, to get finished. Though. And there's, yeah, there's some cool pictures of getting the engine set in it and things like that. Is that heavy? Not really. <laughs> I don't remember that being rusted out. Okay, I'm sure we're gonna find more rust from it sitting for three years. Um, I don't think that's those headlights we have. Look at this. Those are gigantic. No, they're the exact same size. Are you sure? Yes. Definitely doesn't fit. What? <laughs> no trust. She doesn't trust anything I say. I'm gonna need your help with this. The people watching? Sure, if one of them wants to show up right now and help me lift this front end off here, that would be perfect. We'll be back. One of the problems with a three-year-old project that you're getting back into is you go out and buy a brand new body lift and then find the body lift you bought the last time in the back of the Jeep. I know this is a Prothane motion control body kit and this is a, they didn't put their name on it from Jag's body kit, <laughs> or lift kit, I'm sorry. Um, I think these look cooler. That's the reason we're gonna use these ones. <laughs> There's the brand new bushing kit we installed when we built this. We're gonna have Jeep body bushings forever. You have used them on a lot of different things. 
Those weren't body bushings. Those were all suspension bushings. Oh. I'm gonna need a bigger magnetic tray. You have a gigantic one. There's that ratchet strap we've been looking for. Have we? No. Why does it even have a ratchet strap on it? It's mounted to the mounts, right? Hey, look, water. That's not good. Rusty water. That's really not good. Probably shouldn't have let this slip for so long. I think we're ready to try to pick the body off the frame and change all those body bushings out. Now we'll see if I position this so I can get the lift arms under it. No. It's got no, a very short wheelbase. Yes. So why do we just slide the front ones under and then push it back to slide the back ones? And push it back towards so it's picking up in the middle of the body. <clears throat> And we're just trying to grab this outer lip to just lift the body. What? We're just trying to grab this like outer lip so we're just lifting the body. Um, <clears throat> we'll look under there. I'd rather grab something a little more solid than the sheet metal. Well, I meant like right here. Yeah, that's... I don't know. There's a hole. <laughs> I know what you meant. <laughs> we might actually push it further forward too. I was going to say... Maybe it would have been better to put the lift up and attach a chain to the roll bar and just pick up the I don't body. know if the lift has that I don't, much Yeah, lift. I don't think it has that much reach. We're going to take these two chains and we're going to bolt them into the roll bar mount back here. Right there and hang them around the lift arms. And then we're just going to set the front lift arms against the front of the roll bar piece that goes forward and see if it'll lift it without bending it. Can't possibly go wrong. <laughs> I'm not recommending that. That's sketchy. Well, you know the rest of that saying. But uh, I don't have enough lift if I go shorter than that and I don't have enough extension on my Arms, they sell some fancy ones, but I don't have any yet. So uh, we're using four by fours. I can see that I need to reposition that one. How long is it gonna take to put the kit on once we have it in the air? Uh, hopefully 10 minutes. But that doesn't matter because nobody's getting underneath it. Okay. Sounds like you don't want to strap the front ones across the roll bar? No. Yay. All right, here goes nothing. We used our lift! <laughs> Definitely not in the way it was intended. <laughs> I don't know, I, I thought that was why, why, why are we having flying bushings? Uh oh. Because some of them stuck to the bottom of the body. <laughs> All of these appear to be the same thickness. Um, some of them didn't have bolts in them, that's why they don't look as crushed. But our new ones are two different thicknesses. I wonder if the not solid is so, supposed to be better shock absorption. Is that accurate or no? Or those just have like grooves. It's just them. for looks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see we got about a quarter inch difference. And if this kit is the same as the other one, I should have six of the tall ones and four of the short ones. That's the front one. It's shorter yet. So what was that kit? This kit? The one that we just took off. That's just the stock replacement kit. 
Oh. So, as you can see, you replace this bushing with this bushing, and that's where you get your lift, is because this bushing is taller. This goes on the frame, and then the body sits on there, and then on the bottom, whoa, we'll have to find that in a minute. You have this one that goes over, and then you have your bolt and a washer. So you gotta use the bolts that come with it. Um, because they're silver, they're not. What's the difference? Like, those are longer. Okay. This is silver. Well, I mean, like, and this the, is gold. Just the color is the only difference? Yeah. We could use the silver, this doesn't matter. There's different lengths. There's six longer ones, four medium ones, and one really short one. Oh, look. You got destructions. I'm gonna look at these. All right, so according to the destructions, we need a piece that's missing and we're not gonna have it, I'm pretty sure, because we didn't have a whole stock Jeep. The stock bushings, which these ones didn't have in them, require a, a metal sleeve that goes inside of them. This Daystar is the kit that I got from Jegs with the nicer looking bushings has a bigger hole to allow a spacer this size to be used, which that's just an extension for the spacer, which we don't have. So what we're gonna have to do is, I guess, probably not use this kit. This Prothane kit comes with new spacers the full length, so we're gonna end up having to use this one instead. These spacers fit tight in here, and while we might be able to use them in this, it just they fit really loose in there, and I don't know if I like that or not. Okay, so this is what I decided. The uh, We're just gonna use this kit. That looks cooler, but we don't have all the right parts. So we're just gonna use, we're gonna use the bolts out of the new kit because they're not rusty like the bolts out of the old kit, which isn't really rusty, but they're kind of oxidized. I don't know, that doesn't really matter. But uh, all you're gonna do is you've got a washer. washer and then you've got the two pieces of the bushing you've got the cap that goes on the bottom of the frame the spacer piece that goes on top of the frame this goes on the frame it has a bracket this goes around it then this spacer goes in between them and then this bolt goes in like that we're gonna never seize all this in case we ever need to take it back off according to the instructions the tall ones go in the front with the half inch bolts to get a hammer okay and then the short the four shorter ones go in the back they come with an extra one no your really short one will go in the front but we don't need to use it because we need to actually lower the cj and lift the yj and since we're using the cj front wrap we don't need this tall bushing all right, now we'll set the tub back down on the frame and get all the bolt line, bolt holes lined up. Because everything else goes on the bottom side? Yep. That was probably too far because we need to be able to move everything around to get the holes lined up, but we'll see how it goes. We're gonna use Never Seize, and where these bolts are gonna be stuck is this is gonna be welded to this shaft and we're gonna put never seize on there. It's not gonna matter. It's still gonna get welded, but at least I tried. And I'm just gonna completely cover them like that so that there's a better chance that these spacers don't get welded to the bolts. Okay, that one's lifting the frame up to the body. Are we gonna like start them all and then go back and tighten them all? Yes. Yeah, you don't want to tighten any of them until you get all of them started. All right, we've got all of our frame or our body mount bolts in there and started. We're just gonna set this down and then we'll go through and tighten them all. 
And they have that spacer, so you don't have to, I mean, just get them tight. They don't have to be, I mean, I don't know. You know what I'm saying. You're not trying to crush that steel sleeve. You're just trying to get them tight. It's on. Kinda. Kinda. So we still are not completely tight down here. So that's problem one. It's hitting the frame here. That's problem two. But those are minor compared to the steering gear box is hitting the grill. And even that is relatively minor because we could just notch the grill out to the fact that the radiator is covering the input on the steering gear box. And the reason that is, is because this is a CJ front wrap basically going on what we've converted into a YJ Jeep. So the plan now is to remove the steering box Finish mounting the CJ front wrap, and then figure out the steering box afterwards. Um, this is because the front end is still being held up by that steering gear box. If we were had a running driving Jeep, I wouldn't move the steering box, but we don't. So. I'm willing to try to figure something else out for the steering gear box because that may potentially fix other problems that we have down the road like with the steering because it's not there's no way to make the steering work in its current configuration anyway so we're gonna go ahead and pull the front wrap back off or maybe just lift it up pull the steering gear box off and then see if we can get the front wrap mounted and then we'll go from there we're not there yet. So, I don't wanna just keep lifting the body higher, higher, higher. I think we need to bring the front of the, the Jeep down now. So what my plan is, we're just gonna to have to notch out these corners here. And there's actually a double panel here. So this is just sheet metal in the front here. And it comes up into here. What I think we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the grill off we're going to cut this corner off, even with that inner panel there, and then we'll go back and re-weld that corner once it's done and smooth it out so that it follows the inner panel, not the outer panel. We'll move this bolt up a little bit higher, do the same thing on this side, and then that will allow the grill to draw, the whole front end to drop down far enough that we can get the back hooked up, and then the hood should clear, and then we'll just have to remake this mount, which we're already going to have to do anyway because it's in a, the hole's in a different spot. It's further back on the CJ than it is on the YJ. The YJ front end's a little bit longer, I guess. So, we'll pull the grill out, do that, and then we gotta trim the inner fender wells just a little bit, and then we can bolt the inner the fenders on, and then we'll fit the grill to the fenders, and then we'll fit the mount to the grill, and so on and so forth. Okay, now that we got the grill off, so this is the contour that we're gonna follow here. We're just gonna get rid of this corner here. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is I'll split it there, split it there and split it there and then fold this down flat, cut it off so that we can roll that up, form the edge and have it have a nice round corner so it follows that contour exactly. All right, now we'll just fold that up and we're not gonna weld it right now. We still have to take this grill back off once we're done with this and we're gonna clean it up and sand it and paint it and everything. We'll weld all that up and do any body work that we need to at that point. Once we weld that, we'll round those corners. Oh, these? Mm-hmm. I think that sound looks good. Front clip is back on, and as you can see, nice seam there. We did have to cut out the mounting bracket right there because that was hitting, but we were gonna have to fix it anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. All that lines up pretty nicely. We will try to curve this out a little bit when we go back and grind it down and weld it and everything. And now we are about to put the hood back on to see how it all lines up.
we got our front end set on here where it's gonna fit. Uh, we got it bolted at the back, there's no gap, the hood fits nice, it's got a good gap around the cowl, and we've got a pretty even gap on the front here. We might have to adjust this just a tiny bit, but the hood is gonna hold <clears throat> this all square. As you can see, it's pretty rigid with no mount on the front. It's even pretty rigid up and down. I mean, there's not a lot, which we'll put a little bit of pressure up on that because we're gonna squash that body mount when we put it together. But the next thing is we gotta rebuild the mount that's up here. This is the one that we cut off. And as you can see, it's gonna be way too short and not the right shape. So it needs to be different. My plan is, I'm gonna basically rebuild that. This is eighth inch plate. I'm gonna cut this shape out and then I'm gonna bend up one that looks like this but it's gonna be flat. This bend's not gonna be there because I don't have any way to, this is stamped and I can't make that. So once I get done with that, three inches back, I'll cut all this out, I'll bend all the legs and everything, and then I'll cut both sides, and then I can bend my flat pad for my mount, and this will get angled up to the point where it hits the frame. We'll notch a circle out here, and then once we get it all built, we'll go back and we'll just put like a, like a diamond plate on here, just so it's nice and strong, and then add in however much we have to add in to make these two flat again. And that's gonna put a little angle in this bottom piece, but that's okay, I don't mind that. We're gonna get to work. Looks factory to me. It's like a $12 one off of Amazon. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. So what's the second hole for? Uh, I don't know, but we're not gonna use it, so we're not gonna put it in here. <laughs> what are you doing now? Now we have to cut our slots so we can bend this end to that angle there. Well, actually to more than that angle. I don't think that disc is gonna be enough. This one's about wore out. Explain our high dollar setup here. I'm doing my best to not have to heat this to get a bend in it. Uh, this is just a piece of 3 8 plate that I had. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any bigger C clamps or I would clamp it better here, but it's what I got. So we're just going to try to bend this down. And again, we're just trying to mimic this bend just with more angle. Did that go easier than you expected it to? No, it went about like I thought it was. I'm impressed. Hopefully I didn't put too much bend in that. Then we'll have to go back and we'll just get some, some plate and we'll plate over this edge here. It's not going to be the prettiest bracket, but this is the tools that I have. I think the bend angle there is pretty close, but now we need to cut our notch. I think we're probably too long as well, but I don't really have a good way to measure that. So we're just gonna start by marking this and taking, taking some out here, and then we'll keep going until it fits right.
I really need to get a lolling table so I can do that with this hooked on something and not try to do it by hand. Hold this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, we still have just a little bit too much angle here. It's about a quarter of an inch too long. I'm an idiot. Why don't I just take this over here and use it? To use the torch. Why can you? Oh, why, why can you use that one and not the other one? That one's bolted to the bench. Oh, so it's like table. The wood top. Gotcha. All those sparks are gonna make a nice big fire. It's crunchy. Okay, let me get a secret. All right, so now we just need to get that bolt. Well, now that we know it fits, the nut that's supposed to be captured in there is no longer captured. So we need to cut out the side so we can get in there. And I'll just weld a flag on that nut so that it is captured. And then we'll put our bolt in. Just have to grind some of this paint off. It was welded on the inside before. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to weld it on the outside. <clears throat> and then I'll just bend these tabs around. I'll weld this end of these. Weld in here. I might just weld the ends actually. I might weld the end here, the end there. Weld the inside here and across the top there. We'll see how I feel about welding once I start trying to TIG weld overhead on rusty metal. Is it rusty? No. <laughs> but we're gonna get this all cleaned up, get our bolt in there, and then we'll bolt this on, get the hood aligned where we want it, and there's adjustment in there, so we could move it if we had to. And then get this welded on, and then our front end, I think, is mounted at that point. I was wondering why it was crunchy. Call up our friend at the salvage yard. So we're just gonna have to remake this piece. We're gonna move it out of the way for right now. Wait, can you get to the bolt now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you to be a door to open. So this was supposed to have one of those little things that goes over the top of it to keep it from turning, but doesn't have it anymore. So what we're gonna do. After we get this tapped out so a bolt turns through it easy, we'll just drill a hole and then I'll weld a long flag on it. And there's actually another hole here. I might take my, my flag that I weld on there and tap it and put a bolt in there to hold it all together. We'll see. There, tapped out. Now I need to clean it up so it can melt the back of it. I decided this is as thick as the old one was, rather than go through all the trouble of welding it on there. And I just built a brand new one. So that's what we're doing. That bolt's too long. That's what I thought. I need to find a different bolt. What did I do? I think I cut the wrong mark. 
Okay, got our bracket all made. It's bolted on the hood or the grill. Uh, like I said, we're gonna have to replace this because it's rusted out. We'll just cut it off and bolt a new one on there. But our nut is now captured in there, so that's good. I'm gonna just make sure everything's exactly where I want it. I can already tell you I want the grill to go this way just a tiny bit more. And then we're gonna weld this. Uh, I'm gonna TIG weld it. Wish me luck. So it's fit well. Are you just gonna trim it off or grind it down once they're welded? Yeah. It's mounted. I was picturing something just like this bracket when I was building this. Um, maybe with a little bit less of the imperfections, but you always picture without any imperfections and I've never built anything that was perfect. So this goes right in line with what I can do. I'm happy with it. The front end is solid. It doesn't move around. I mean, the whole Jeep is shaking. So that's gonna, be a YJ front end, or no, 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 a CJ front end on what is essentially a YJ Jeep. I didn't think it was supposed to be this hard. Um, if you've done this and I did something wrong, let me know in the comments, but I really can't figure out what else I could have done to get this to line up better, but it doesn't matter because it's done. We're gonna send it. Now, in our next video, we are going to Try to get this 93 4 liter. This is out of a Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, that I bought. And I drove it into the shop before I pulled this motor, but that was three and a half years ago. And it's been sitting like this ever since. Well, three, three and a half years minus a week that took us to get it stuck in here. We gotta run all the wiring. It's fuel injected, so we gotta figure out the fuel system. We've got to find a place to mount the computer. We've gotta figure out and basically everything. There's nothing hooked to it right now. It doesn't the radiator's not in there, there's no cooling hoses, power steering fitting is broke on the back of the power steering pump, so we gotta figure that out. But right now, I just wanna hear it run again. Um and That's my goal. By the end of the next video, we're gonna hear this thing run again. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Maybe if you point out what I did wrong, I'll learn something or somebody else can too. But for now, we'll see you soon.